Hey everyone, welcome back to Carrots and Olives. My name is Brittany and today we're going to talk about this box. So I received an email from Goldspot on the mystery dip pen uh, or the mystery dip fountain pen and ink surprise box for January 2023 and I heard about this box last year. I think it was around November when when gold spot did a video on their mystery dip pens and like some of their top rated fountain pens for the year and they had mentioned their mystery dip box so um they said i guess it only comes around every so often in this mystery dip there was about 110 boxes available and then once they sell out they sell out so what you can find in the box is a fountain pen with a stainless steel nib and a piston filling mechanism and it retails for over $200. Uh, they also include five samples of fountain pen inks and they are random so they don't tell you what's actually in the box. You will find out when you get it. So um, I'm actually excited but quite nervous because as a huge fountain pen fan I do already have a lot of fountain pens so I'm curious to see what is in this box and I hope that I like it the price for this box was actually a hundred and nineteen dollars um, and they show that the MRC MSRP is two hundred and sixty dollars so uh, right now all the boxes are actually sold out I purchased mine I think on Monday or Tuesday is when I got the email and I purchased it that same day and I got it two days later. So shipping was really quick now that the holidays are over and I'm excited to see what this mystery box actually is. So before we get started, if you purchased this mystery dip for January 2023 and you haven't received your box yet, please either be warned that um, whatever's in this box is most likely going to be in your box because I think, I want to say they're probably all the same color, but I'm not 100% sure. I haven't seen many videos of people in the past talking about these. I don't know if that's just a thing because they don't want to <clears throat> ruin the surprise, but I'm just letting you know if you don't want to know what is in your box, please click away. Okay, so I'm not going to look at the information on the paper, whatever is actually in here, if there's anything important in there. Um, I am a little bit nervous because I do not see an ink unless the ink is supposed to be inside the box. All right, so we get a nice sturdy gold spot box. It is magnetic. Let's see. What? Oh, okay. So it's Gioia. And surprisingly enough, I do not have any type of uh, this brand in my collection. So let's see what the pen looks like. Oh, we get a gold envelope. Mm -hmm. This is the Nuvola fountain pen B. From B, I guess. Some information, writing emotion, um, just some more information. So it is an Italian brand. And it's it's really jam-packed in there. 
I do like this whole aesthetic, this whole look and presentation of opening up the pen with their inks and how they have this presented. It's really nice. So I can't get my pen out. <laughs> it's stuck. Okay. So I have seen the pens and I've always just kind of move on past them. I got a little bit of some like scuff marks on it, maybe from trying to stick it into this tight spacing. So that's not fun. Yep, scuff marks over here too. I don't know if that's supposed to buff away. Oh, it could buff away. Yeah, okay. And it says Goya on the barrel. This barrel is actually quite thick. Um, it kind of reminds me of the supernova of the Leonardo in like thickness or in girth. I do like the blue trimming. They're all different. And I got a broad. Oh, that's what the B was standing for. It's a broad. Okay, I'm not mad. I just hope that it writes well. It does seem like my feed is a little bit wonky on the pen. So hopefully the pen need to fix that okay um overall it does seem it's not too heavy even though it's pretty girthy and then the section is quite comfortable it's not too much it's not very thin the threads are at the very top of the pen so um they're not getting in the way and it's a piston that's right so the barrel should not be coming off. Oh. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Got it. So that is very well hidden. It almost seems invisible. The pen is pretty lightweight, even though it's like girthy and quite chunky looking. And then the clip is seems doable like functional and yeah it seems like a pretty sleek pen let's look at the inks I'm just gonna set it down so it's not gonna take me forever to pull it out um, so what do we have we have Colorverse Alpha UMA uh, Colorverse Dan Hong. Oh, so these are all Colorverse. They're all the same brand. Colorverse Nala Malsami. Luckily, I only have one Colorverse ink. And none of these are it. Ooh, this one's interesting. Look at that. Colorverse Ori and Colorverse Dan Hong. Okay. So I need to swatch these out before I decide which ink I want to put in this pen. So I'm going to get my Kakimori pen and my ink swatch book just to do some swatches. Okay, so let's start with this first one. It looks turquoise. Well, let's really find out. Very dark. Colorverse 
color verse. This one's going to be difficult to spell. Nala. Mosani. Sony. Nalas. Nalas. Mal. Sami. <laughs> okay. So it's like black and teal. The teal seems to only come out maybe after it dries, but it's a dark ink. Ooh, okay. In the water, that's the color that comes out. I do like my dark inks with hints of color because it makes interesting, um, you know, it makes, uh, it's more interesting than just having black. So let's go to another dark color because I don't want to go straight to orange and accidentally contaminate, contaminate it. I'm trying to clean this pen, my Kaki Mari. Okay, so let's go to this one. Ooh, this one looks brown. It's very light. I'm not a big fan of light inks because then I can't see it very well and I'm afraid as I get older I'm definitely not going to be able to read what I wrote in a very light colored ink. Colorverse U M A So it's a fun ink. Seems like it has hmm, some shading properties. Some um, light inks can dry darker, which is more um, something I would prefer than just a light ink being very light or like chroma shading, but it's still light regardless. So this one is a warm color. Wow, that's very bright. Very, very red. And I don't have a lot of red ink, so this is this is a good thing to have a color I don't carry in my collection. Then. And this is actually quite nice and um, I would probably use it more in a fine nib since it's so bright. But it's definitely legible. Um, I just shy away from warm inks just because it's just not something I prefer. But I would definitely put this in a fine pen and the fact that it's just a sample means that it will go faster than being in an actual full ink bottle. Okay, so next. 
looks to be orange. I do have a couple of orange inks that I don't use. Um, this is pretty. I wonder if it will have shading properties. So Colorverse Ori. It seems more of a darker orange. And I feel like I can work with this color. All right. Yeah, I see some shading. It almost shades like a lighter orange to a darker orange, which is doable because then I can put it in a fine pen. Okay, last. Ooh, this one has. I should have. I should have shaped it. It has shimmer or glitter in it. Off the bat, I want to say I'm not, I'm excited, but not excited um, because it's yellow. Colors Ornament Yellow. But it is showing up on the screen. And I'm just curious if it will dry darker. It seems like it has some shimmer properties. I just didn't shake it up before to get a good sample but um i will see how it looks after it's dried okay so these are the colors let me zoom out Ooh, i really like this color it's has sheen and it's turquoise with like a red sheen um, this Colorverse UMA is interesting. It does seem to have like some sheen. I don't know. It dried interesting on this corner. Um, if it does, it seems like it might have some blue in there. And then this pink or this red, sorry, is more leaning a little bit burgundy, kind of. Um, and it has shading, so the shading looks a lot darker and more, less vibrant, bright red, like blood red. It's, I don't know, it's leaning a little bit purple red to me. Um, ooh, Colorverse Ori, that has some, um, what is that, sheen to like a green, orangey green. And then Colorverse Ornament Yellow is pretty yellow. <laughs> let me let me try it again. I'm gonna shake it up. See if I get some of the sheening.
just to see if that makes a difference. Overall, I'm happy with about three out of five of the colors. I would definitely use this blue or blue sheen, purple, reddish, um, this red and this orange, the green and the yellow, not so much. I will try it on maybe some cream paper to see if it comes out darker because that could do the trick. Um, to where I can use it. So what color am I going to put in this pen to test it out? I honestly want to try. I love this color. I know I'm going to love it no matter what. Um, I kind of want to try either these two in the pen. And I'm leaning more towards this color versus Ori because this green sheen or shimmer is pretty cool. I don't know what it is. Is it me or is it this pen grip is slightly different color it's like a green it's like a black green a black green um okay so this is January, it's the seventh. Okay, this pen is scratchy and it's pulling and I want to adjust it. I feel like maybe the tines are just off a little bit. Gold spot. Um, mystery dip. Move on. I need to fix this. It's bugging me. <laughs> try to do it on camera I don't know if this is going to work let me turn the light on so you can see better Yeah, that's, I gotta look at it without the camera lens. It does look like the tines are slightly misaligned. So I'm just, I just need to use something to fix it. And I think it's because I write with a high angle. Yeah. The closer I write to the paper, my lower angle will definitely, um, doesn't scratch as much. Yeah. Because I have a higher writing angle, It writes a lot better. It's like, it's like smooth, like butter. It's very wet. Yes, that's very wet. Um, 
All right, well, I think it writes a lot better now. The only problem is that I'm always changing my angle when I write. And that's just because sometimes my hand just gets tired. But I think overall, I mean, the pen writes, it's just a tad scratchy. It's very juicy, which is nice, especially for a broad. Um, and it's comfortable, it's lightweight. It is the piston filler. The inks are nice, definitely um, new to my collection, so that's a bonus. The only problem is that the nib is not quite as perfect as it should be. And um, my inks will not fill this piston because there's not enough ink to fill it. So that's a bummer, but I do have other pens that can use these inks, which is, um, which means that I could still use them. Um, I do like the colors of more than half the inks, which is, I guess, good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so would I get this box again? I think I will. I was actually quite surprised. I know I, once when I get the nib, to the right, um, less scratchy area, then I think this pen will stay in my collection. And uh, yeah, so if you have any questions or tell me what you think, would you buy the next mystery box whenever that comes out or the mystery dip when that comes out? And um, let me know in the comments. All right, well, thank you for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.